It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, everybody. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Bob Ross, The Art of Chill. And this is a, a family weight kind of game in which all the players are going to be attempting to paint one of Bob Ross's famed paintings. While Bob Ross is painting it himself. And it's sort of a race game in which you gather the necessary art supplies, utilize them to the best effect, and try to be faster and more efficient than the other players while you are completing those paintings. Let me show you how this works. We'll come on back after that and I'll tell you if I think it's successful at what it attempts to do. So here's what we get with the game. Every player is going to have a palette in their chosen color and you are going to get some tokens here and then you put your chill cube, chill marker in the chill meter there. Actually, well, I put them on the wrong side. They go there. I was too chill already. And what you're attempting to do is race up the track here Whoever gets to chill at the end of the track first is the winner of the game. So every player has one of these. I'm not going to be showing you these for right now. I'm just going to be focusing on, on one player's space. And then you uh, set up one of these paintings in the easel here, which is pretty cool. And you are pretty much ready to begin. Every player has some starting cards. We flip some of these face up and you're good to go. So I'm just going to move these. I'm going to move the easel out of the way for now. I'll just show you on a flat painting on the table. But be aware that comes in there. So I'm just going to pick one of these and that's going to be the one we are working on. All right, we're going to put the little marker at the beginning of said track. And each turn goes like this. The first thing you do on your turn is you're going to roll the die. And the die has four possible choices. The first one and the most common shows up on three faces is Bob's head there. When that comes up, we draw a chill card, we flip it, we do whatever it says, and then usually Bob will move one spot. That signifies him painting, him working his way through the painting. And once you've done that, then you take some actions, okay? The other choices are, you can draw a card from the top of the art supplies deck, you can add a paint to your palette if you want, or you can, with the hand symbol, simply take another action. That's a free action, and then you get your three normal ones. So let's say I rolled and let's say I got that, I draw my free card and then I take my three actions. I can do a bunch of different things. So the things I can do are, I can draw more art supplies. So I can take any one of these or I can take one from the top of the deck. I can add paints to my palette. I can put them in the A section or the B section and then later on use those to paint. I can gather a technique card, which is one of these. I'll show you how to do that in one second. I can wash my palette, one side or the other. I can wash my choices away here and flip over four new ones, or I can paint, which is what we're trying to go for here, painting. All right, so let's jump ahead here a little bit. Let's say it's my turn, I'm gonna roll the die. It's the first thing I do on my turn, I get that. That means I get a free action on my turn, great. So with that free action, I am going to gather these art supplies right here. I'm gonna put that in my hand, and replace it. And then I have my three regular actions. So with my three regular actions, first thing I'll do is I'll add that titanium white that I just took to my palette. And for my second action, I'm going to paint. I am going to paint the charming cabin that takes all three of these colors. And I also need a palette knife as the tool. I have the palette knife in my hand. That's where it must be. I'm going to discard that and then I am going to score for completing that cabin. So here's how that works. I'm gonna get one chill point for every paint I used, in this case three. I might get a bonus if Bob himself has not completed that feature yet. In this case, he has not completed that feature. And so I get a bonus one point for doing it before him, that's four. And then I might also get bonus points if I complete that feature before any other player. In this case, I'm the first one. So I'll cover this spot up and I get a bonus two points. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six points. And I'll move up the chill meter here to represent those points. I get rid of these paints that are now used and I keep going. That was only my second action. So for my third action, I might, for example, draw one of these into my hand and then replace it and that's it, okay? Uh, the way you acquire these techniques 
and the reason I want to talk about these now is because you might get some victory points from them as well, is by, let's say I have these cards all in my hand here, by discarding two cards of the same feature with the same thing, in this case two sap green cards, and then acquiring the matching technique. So I would get rid of these two and acquire the sap green technique. That means I'm, I'm well experienced with sap green, I'm good at it, and I am going to immediately get two chill points. And then from that point on, every time I use sap green to paint, I'm gonna get a bonus point, bonus one point. To everything I just showed you, I would add one. And you might end up with a bunch of these. So I might also be, uh, you know, have great technique with cadmium yellow and, I'm, and the fan brush perhaps. And then later I'll paint something that includes all that, such as the happy little trees. And if I did that, uh, I would get one, two, three, four. Let's assume that one other player has done it already, okay? So one, two, three, four. There is no bonus for the happy little trees. So four, I go here, so I get one more for that. That's five, but then one point for each of these. Six, seven, eight points. That's quite a bit, that's a huge leap. So that's how that works, okay? This is all going to be over when Bob finishes the painting himself, at which point we take this painting, remove it, we get all of these back, and we give him a new painting to begin with, or someone around the table completes all the different parts of the painting, and at that point there's also a switch over, all right? And you carry over any cards on your palette, any cards in your hand, and you just continue playing until someone gets all the way to the end of the track. Whoever gets there first is going to be the winner of the game. All right, so there you have it. That is Bob Ross, The Art of Chill, and let's talk about it a little bit. I'm gonna be using my target audience system here to break it down a little bit. So let's start with thematic ties, and this is actually a big one for this game. The theme here seems to be to, it has a nostalgia to it that I've seen be extremely captivating to a ton of people that I showed the game to, and, and other people just online that I've seen. So it's one of those things that if you are familiar with Bob Ross and his work, if you find it endearing, if you feel nostalgic about it, I think it's going to appeal to you quite a bit, and I think they handled the theme with care and passion, and that's apparent. I really like it. I myself am not as passionate about Bob Ross and his uh, TV show and his artwork as some other people, it would seem, but I do enjoy it, and I think it's a, it's a very charming, uh, from a thematic point of view, a very charming game. The aesthetics here, which is also the quality of the components and the look of everything, are very nice. The easel is nice, it's a nice touch that they added, but everything else works really well. Cards are great, everything's really good quality, uh, colors are on point, everything is a very nice package from an aesthetic point of view and works together very cleanly. Replayability, which also includes scalability. I'll come back to scalability in just one second. The replayability, I think, is there. They give you tons of different paintings. Each one is double-sided, so you don't know what's coming up. And um, while they all basically function the same way, you do get a new piece of artwork that you are, quote-unquote, working on while you are playing the game. You're gonna go through usually three of them in a game. So there are a lot of them, and you'll you'll see different ones as you play from one game to another. I enjoy the replayability here. I think it's going to be one that, especially, again, people that enjoy and find the, the theme charming will keep coming back to and finding fun here. As far as the scalability goes, it's a little iffy, uh, and mainly because the die roll that advances Bob is going to, that mechanism is going to feel different with two players and, and three and four, right? So at four players, Bob might be, you're gonna, you, you could very well get fewer turns per painting as compared to Bob Ross, right? In two players, the other player gets one roll, which might advance him once on his track, and then you go again. And it's not bad necessarily, but it does give you a different feel. Everyone feels the same pressures, so it's not that it's uh, not balanced. I just find it to be sometimes, before you're even ready to paint one thing, he, whoop, he runs by and he gets everything done and you move on to the next painting. It takes a little adjusting, your, your expectation, if you're used to playing two-player and then play four, for example. It's not bad, just thought I would mention it. 
Game length is really good. The game uh, feels like it's over when it needs to be over. You'll move up on the track. You'll make nice, nice big jumps up on the score track on the chill meter. And I enjoy that too because you, whenever you do make a great move like that, it feels good. Sort of jump out in front of the pack. But then someone else might, you know, do it to you in a couple of turns. But uh, but it feels good, and the length feels correct. I enjoy that as well. The ease of play, which is fiddliness. Uh, if there's any weird design choices, anything like that, I did not find anything that felt that way. I thought the easel could have been something that might have come across as gimmicky and annoying, but it's not. It works, and it's, it has a nice little stand across the bottom for the Bob uh, Ross figure to move along, so that works. You can always not use it, but it, it's nice. Um, nothing else feels fiddly or annoying. The only thing is you have to remember to roll that die at the beginning of every turn and sometimes players are so ready to take their turn, they know what they want to do, that they forget it. So you need to keep reminding people to pass that die, roll the die first, deal with that. And then lastly, tactics and strategy and of course luck. There's going to be luck here. You're drawing from a deck of cards sometimes. But it's not any more than in lots of other extremely popular family weight games like Ticket to Ride, right? They're very, they're really ultimately very similar games from a mechanical point of view. Making sets, grouping together sets, and then cashing those in for something. In Ticket to Ride, you're laying down train track, and in this, you're making painting, you know, paintings. You're making features on paintings. But they feel very similar, you know, so mechanically, they're, they're alike you'll get pretty much all of the same tactics and uh, luck as you get in a game like Ticket to Ride in this one. And I like that balance. I think it works well. It's a nice equalizer, the uh, luck in this game. Because, yes, you might roll the die and keep getting free stuff while someone else rolls and keeps getting the bob um, head, you know. But it should even out with how many times you roll the die in the game. So, that's all to say that I find the game... Uh, as I've said already, very charming. It's a, it's a quirky little game, but it's one that is not just a cash-in, which is what I thought it might be. It's not just product placement. It is a good design that utilizes its theme in a clever, quirky way and pays homage to uh, the inspiration while making an interesting game that I think folks that enjoy family weight games and especially or fans of the joy of painting, uh, I think they're going to enjoy this one. So that's it for my look at this. I'm going to give this one a seal of approval. I think it's neat, and I think if you are, if it caught your eye because of the theme, because it's a painting game, I don't believe you'll be disappointed. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.